everyone. I've received a couple of emails from different students that are uh, really struggling with certain parts of this online lab activity. Um, I know it's a little different since I'm not in front of you to troubleshoot it um, and since I'm getting some of the same uh, type of questions regarding some parts of the lab I thought I'd try to make a short video for you. Uh, so when you click on this assignment, which isn't due until tomorrow, by the way, I gave you two days to do it, so it's due on Friday. When you click on it, it'll prompt you to make a copy of the lab. And this first part of the lab sheet really tells you what to do to click on this link, choose simulations, choose HTML5, start the bending light simulation. It tells you what to click on and where to drag certain features. So let me show you how to do that first. So once I click on that, um, you'll see the FET simulation site here. Uh, I'm going to click simulations like it tells me to, HTML5, and then I'm going to find the one that says bending light, and that's here. I'm going to click the play button to start the simulation, and then it says click on the more tools box, so I'm going to click here. And then um, I'm going to turn on the laser, so just clicking on it turns it on, and then I'm going to drag the circular protractor out of my toolbox until it looks like this, where the vertical line is crossing right in between my rays here, and that, ooh, trying to get my zero right on the dotted line, there we go, and then this top part should be right where the water and the air meet because this part up here is air, the top material is air, and this part down here I'm going to actually set to water because that's what it asks you to do um, in the next few um, sets of instructions. So I want to drag the speed indicator uh, out from the lower left of the simulation because I want to make sure that I know what's going on here speed wise. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to keep that right here for me to kind of play with uh, later. Uh, the laser can be dragged to change the incident angle. So if I want to just move this, it changes my incident angle, which is right here from the zero mark. So if I wanted to measure 10 degrees, I would have to move it right here. This would be hitting at 10 degrees from the normal or that imaginary vertical line. Um, and then we would have to... Uh, measure what this angle is here uh, later. So I want to make sure that I check the ray and angle boxes. So I'm going to check where it says ray and I'm going to check where it says angles because it's telling me that I'm actually only at 10.5. I'm not at 10. So I want to get it right on the 10. If I can do that, and you just kind of have to play with it, it's a little trial and error here when I get it right on the 10. All right, um, so that should be enough to get you set up here. Uh, so that when you start your lab, the law of reflection part data table A on your lab sheet says change the angle of the laser to the angles of incidence listed below and record the angle of reflection. So the very first one was an example that I gave you that was put the incidence angle to 10 degrees and then record what your reflection angle is here. Because this is refracted into the water, I'm not looking at that. I'm looking at the reflected angle back in air as if it hits the surface of the water and bounces backwards. And that's 10, and that's what you have in your data table. The next one it asks you to do is 20. Gee, I wonder what the, the angle is going to be since the law of reflection states that whatever angle uh, is incident upon a surface, it will be the exact same angle when it bounces off. Look at that, it's 20 degrees. So you would write that down under angle of reflection and you'll continue to fill out that data table. Then you have a few questions to answer. The next part is where people started to struggle a little bit. And that, um, that part is kind of um, where we start to play with the refraction angle, which is this part down here. We're not really looking so much at the reflection part, we're looking at the refraction or the bending as the light goes through uh, a new medium. So the next part, you're gonna need a little bit 
of math and the equation is, is on your lab sheet, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. But it says to shine the laser so the light is traveling at 10 degrees from the normal from air into water. So we're going to do that again and change it back to 10 just for our example here. Really is trial and error to get this laser right on the 10. There we go. So then since you're going from a less dense substance to a more dense substance, that means light would slow down because it's having to um, avoid more particles and go around more particles since water has uh, a more densely packed material than air does. So, um, so that means that your, your light will actually slow down. The velocity of the light here is less then say the velocity of the light up here. You can see it's one, but down here it's much less. So that's a really good indicator for you. And because it's less, it forces the light ray to bend and the angle of refraction is smaller. As you can see, it says 7.5. And that's what I would write down in my example. Now, uh, what, you, what people are struggling with is um, it's actually how to do the math. So um, I'm going to try to show you what the math would look like uh, if I wanted to calculate the index of refraction for this particular example. All right, so what I've done is I've switched back to the copy of the lab sheet, and this is part B, the part that we were just um, demonstrating in the simulation. This is the angle that I chose as the angle of incidence with my laser pointer. And this was the angle that was recorded by you as the student. Now, this is the example I'm using, but you as the student would have recorded the 7.5 degrees that the light made in the water. Now, the index of refraction for air is always one. That's why this column, since you're starting your laser pointer uh, light beam in air, it's always going to have an index of one. And if you don't remember, the index of refraction is the number that's particular to a substance that really relates to its density. Uh, so the higher the index, the more dense the substance is. And that means that the light that passes through that substance will bend more and will have less of an angle. So as the index increases, the speed of light through that substance will decrease and the angle of refraction through that substance would also decrease. So that's kind of what that means. But as you can see down here, I've given you some example math. And this is the equation you'll be using where in the index of refraction for the incidence material, and that's air, times the sine of the angle in that material, which was 10, that's going to be equal to the other substance, which is water. So you're looking for the index of refraction for water. You're solving for this part of the equation. And you wrote down the angle of refraction in water here. So when you plug this in, it looks like 1 times sine of 10 degrees, because this was all of the information for air, and that is equal to N, the index that we don't know, times the sine of 7.5, which was the water information. And when you solve for this, you would divide by sine of 7.5 to get this N by itself. That's just a little algebra. And your index should come out to about 1.33, which is actually the index of refraction for water. Now, you'll notice that water, you know, is used the entire time. So really, you should be getting close to the same index of refraction for all of this, or at least within rounding. But remember that no experiment is without error, so they won't all be exactly the same. So please make sure you're doing your math. And I ask you to do an example of your math here, and you can type it out just like I did, but for one of your other examples. You'll use the same math each time with different numbers, so I only need to see an example of one of your calculations. So if I switch back to my simulation here, uh, the next thing on your list is to do an angle of 20. So if I move my laser pointer so that my my initial angle, my incidence angle is 20 degrees, I want to write down what my refracted angle is here in the water. And it's 14.9. So when I switch back to my lab sheet, if you're doing this on your you know, computer and you didn't print it out to write it out, which is fine, 
you would write 14.9 as your angle right here. Then you would set up your equation the same way we did before, only your, your index for air would be still one, because it's still one, and you would multiply it by the sine of the angle in the air, which was 20. And then that would equal the end that you don't know times the sine of the angle you wrote down, which would be 14.9. And you could show me your example work there and you write down your answer here. And you'll keep doing the same math as you go. So hopefully that explains part B. Now part C is a little bit different. So let's go back to the simulation and see what that looks like. So in the part C simulation, um, you're gonna change the top substance to water, so we're gonna start in a more dense substance, and you're gonna change the bottom one to air. So it's kind of like going from more dense to less dense. And this is the type of situation where critical angle can occur, and you're gonna actually show that happen. So in this one, uh, you're gonna have a slower velocity here, a smaller angle, if you will. So I'm gonna show that to you. A smaller angle will exist here, and the speed of the ray will be much slower in the water and then coming out in air it will be much faster and that will allow the light beam to bend away from this vertical line and your angle that you're recording now is going to be bigger now that it's going through air and it speeds up so the very first example that i give you is to do the angle of incidence at 10 again so we're going to try to get this back on the 10 seems to be my toughest one to do and then your angle of refraction in air is 13.3 approximately, and that should already be written down on your lab sheet. You're gonna use the exact same equation that you just did. So let's go back to your lab sheet and take a look at that. You're gonna use the exact same equation to find the index of refraction um, in water. So here's the tricky part. This time I'm not solving for something on the right side, I'm solving for something on the left side. So what you need to remember about this equation is that it is separating one substance from another. This equal sign separates the air from the water or whichever one you decide to put on which side. So since we started in water, I'm gonna start in the water on the left side. So I don't know the index for water. So I'm gonna leave that as my variable n. And then I'm gonna multiply by the sign of the angle in the water, which was 10 degrees. And that's gonna be set equal to the index for air, which is one, times the sine of the angle that refracted in air, which was 13.3, 13.4, okay? Whatever you wrote down. And then you're gonna still solve it the same way. You're gonna divide by sine of this angle to get the end by itself. And then you would get the index of refraction for water and you would write that down. And you're gonna do that same math and show me an example of that down here in your analysis. Just one example of your math. If you're handwriting it, it's great. If you're typing it, that's okay too. Um, so the next thing you do, if you switch back to the simulation here, is so if we switch back to the simulation right here, uh, the next thing you would do is you would move down to the next angle in your in your chart and it asks you to go for 20 degrees. So you put the laser pointer at 20 degrees and you record the angle of refraction in air. And you do the same math that you did before and you record it in your data table. Uh, and you do the same equation. Just remember to keep your water information on one side of the equal sign, both your index that you're looking for and the angle of incidence. And then keep your air information on the other side of the equation, um, which would be uh, one for your index of refraction, right? And then air, uh, the air angle is the one you are recording in your data table. And you're just solving for the index for water, which remember, it doesn't always come out perfect, but you, uh, you try to get it that way because your angles might not always be perfect. Now, the next thing that it asks you to do really quick is it asks you to try to find the point of critical angle, which if you keep increasing this, like it asks you to, to 50 and then to 60, and, and oh, it, it kind of disappears on you, right? So you wanna take note of you have reflecting happening back into the water and you have refracting happening into the air. You wanna find the point at which this disappears at 90 and what happens on this side, and you wanna note what angle that is. 
I hope this was helpful, you guys. Email me if you have further questions.